The Great Barrier Reef in Australia is an ideal place for marine life lovers. So in 1985, the driver and businessman Doc Turka thought that he would take advantage of the influx of tourists to visit this beautiful landmark. And he decided to provide them with an innovative service, the first of its kind in the world. The idea in short was a floating hotel in the middle of the Barrier Reef. And despite the implementation of the idea and its success, the hotel ended up leaving the Barrier Reef to North Korea, a country that has fewer visitors. And after the hotel, the achievement record occupancy turned into a completely deserted hotel. You now must be excited to know what happened, right? Hello, this is Joe from Wiki Planets, and today I'm gonna take you on a journey to Wiki Story Planet to know the whole story about the floating hotel. Let's go! The Great Barrier Reef is considered one of the natural wonders of the world and it is a paradise for diving and snorkeling lovers and everything related to beach tourism in general. It is located in the north of Australian continent at a distance of kilometers from the beach and that is why visitors since 1983 have used to go on a cruise of no less than an hour to reach the reef. In this regard, Reeflink was one of the first companies that started renting yachts for that matter. This company was founded by Doc Turka, the entrepreneur and a big fan of diving at the same time. And as a result of the success of these quick trips of this quality, Doc thought of offering a new form of accommodation. The idea was to provide visitors with a longer stay on the banks of the Great Barrier Reef, as it is the largest gathering place for reefs and atolls in the whole world, with a length of 2,300 kilometers. However, it was a fantastic idea even before it was implemented. At first, he had in mind that they would make a chip or a number of chips that would be permanently fixed and operated as a hotel. In response, he conducted studies and asked for consultation from specialized companies until he eventually was able to make the best choice which was the building of a completely floating hotel on the water, exactly like the idea of oil platforms. In fact, the project began to be implemented by one of the oil rig construction companies located in Singapore, and the city of Townsville was chosen to be the location to host the hotel. As for the last step, a contract was signed with Four Seasons, one of the most prominent hotel chains in the whole world, to run the new hotel. And from here, Doug began promoting his new idea of a floating hotel. By the way, if you are planning a vacation, would you agree to be accommodated in a floating hotel or do you prefer an ordinary one overlooking the sea? Tell us in the comments. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. The location chosen for the hotel was approximately 70 kilometers away from the coast. It was planned that the hotel would be installed with seven giant anchors, and the cost was estimated about $100 million equivalent to current prices. In the summer of 1987, the hotel was towed by a giant tugboat from the side where it was built in Singapore, which was 5,000 kilometers away. The hotel was equipped with all possible technologies to take into account the preservation of the environment. It contained a sewage treatment system in addition to a waste collection system and transporting into land. This is beside desalination plants and central air conditioning systems and even provided with medical clinics and emergency services. Moreover, a large space was allocated for a group of workshops that were manufactured almost everything needed spans from micro to micro as well as a laboratory for permanent monitoring of the effects on the environment. The hotel management also kept in mind to prepare a conference hall and a helipad, so that the hotel can be considered a small city that includes all amenities. As for entertainment, there was nothing wrong. The hotel included theaters, restaurants, nightclubs, libraries, swimming pools, and tennis courts, besides the area of the aquarium which was covered by glass from all sides. I mean, if you don't want to force yourself to get into the water, you can watch the seabed while you're inside the hotel itself. Finally, the hotel had a submarine and a number of grass bottom boats that allowed visitors to take periodic trips to any place or any island close to the hotel location. Early after the hotel arrived at the designated place, 
and after a long journey it encountered with the heavy waves of bad luck. And out of the blue, these waves transformed into a hurricane, causing some damages to the hotel. In addition, this accident had spread fears and worries among people, as there is no guarantee of repeating such weather in the middle of the ocean and 70 kilometers away from the shore. However, the damage that occurred caused problems between the hotel management and the manufacturer in Singapore, and moreover problems appeared with the state administration at the stress conditions for safety and environmental preservation. But in the end, the hotel continued to serve because it was not possible after these expenses and dreams to be cancelled. In fact, the hotel's location, its idea and advertisement have bit off. So despite all these difficult circumstances, a hotel operated with unparalleled success and the occupancy rate was increased under 85% to the extent that some people consider these hardships were in the best interest of the hotel, not against it. But from here, problems started to arise. In August 1988, a fire broke out in one of the boats transporting visitors, and this fire caused significant injuries to 10 people. And in the following September, one month later, a group of divers discovered tons of live ammunition in the depth 3 kilometers away from the hotel. The munitions were found to have been buried in the ocean in 1950 when it was legitimated. And certainly, frightening quantities like these live munitions pose a danger to the hotel and the whole place. And as a result, the occupancy decreased to 20% after hitting 85% before the munition news. The recurrence of these strange events, people began to really suspect that this hotel was cursed and this idea has controlled Doug Turka and his son Peter who was in charge of the project. And after the founders were waiting impatiently for the day that the hotel would arrive to Townsville, they started dreaming of the day this dissolved the whole project. And that is why the hotel was offered for sale after less than one year since it first opened its door in Australia over the Great Barrier Reef. And then it arrived to Vietnam. The hotel succeeded in returning its popularity and denied the acquisition that it was cursed. For 10 years, the hotel was one of the factors in the renaissance of tourism in Vietnam. But eventually, the idea that was new in the 80s started getting old in the early 2000s. And that is why the hotel was offered for sale again in 1998. And this time the buyer was the tour company Hyundai Sun from South Korea. Although the new buyer was a South Korean company, the location that was chosen for the hotel was in the Mount Kangum area, which is a mountain range in the border area between North and South Korea. The main purpose of choosing this site was the investors' dreams of a bright future after the unification of Korea. They believed that the hotel would be a symbol of cooperation between North and South Korea. And this is because at the beginning of the millennium, a political rapprochement between North and South Korea was beginning to take place. And the prevailing belief was that it was only a matter of time before Korea united again. A Germany has united for a period of eight years. Actually, the hotel became the site of many influential meetings between Koreans families that separated after the Korean War in 1950. And for the second time, the foreign hotel proved itself and helped to establish the popularity of tourism in the region. Unfortunately, the relationship didn't go as expected. Specifically in 2008, the big conflict occurred. A 53-year-old South Korean woman was killed by a gunshot at the hands of a South Korean military which claimed that it was the old woman that she entered a prohibited military area 17 kilometers from Mount Kangang. Then events developed quickly to the extent that Hyundai's son stopped all the tourist tours and since this time, and with the lack of information from North Korea, it was not clear the hotel would operate or not, with the persistence of legal problems and diplomatic disputes between the two countries. In 2019, the North Korean president visited the hotel and said that the hotel is like a worn-out area, adding that the nature of the architect is also not commensurate to the North Korean theme, and ordered the hotel to be redeveloped from A to Z. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, all the development efforts were postponed. 
and the hotel that was one day an engineering marvel and was in the middle of natural wonder became just a rented hotel in a place that is difficult to visit in the first place. And that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That means a lot.